They told me for years there was no money in podcasting. Well, they were all wrong. In general, but what was COVID like for you, um, like in your hometown, in your nearest community? Like what, what break it down for me. Well, I live, uh, I live in Sable Beach. It is uh, one of the top tourist beaches in actually all of Canada. I think it's second only to either Grand Bend or Wasega, which are both, I think, on Lake Huron as well as Sable. Just a little, a little couple hours west of Toronto. But during the off season, it's a small town, maybe like two, three thousand people at, at most. And then during the summer, we get. Depends on the weekend. We can get like a hundred thousand people here at the beach. It's wow. It's happening. And at the at the start of the pandemic, it's just a lot of us up here, we were just like kind of scared, afraid. We didn't know what this was. But right. for me, it was it was business as usual. Again, you know, I work at a it's a grocery store. It's it's ran by family. So I work for family. But at, at the start of that, I put in more hours at that store than I ever did. Cause we get, you know, some people were were, le- were temporarily leaving because they were they were scared or some people just left because they they had other jobs and i well i have to put in some time here i have to go help out my family and do what i can so for a good chunk it was business as usual you would get we, there used to be a certain group of people every few months would be the ones that would get vilified by the media or by just people in general first off it was like okay two weeks to flatten the curve that was literally two years ago this week. <laughs> um, oh my God. I, it, it, oh my God. Holy shit. Fred. That's an epiphany and a half right there. Uh, yeah. Sunday will be the two year anniversary of the big world. Well, actually it'll be the next Wednesday would be that, that Monday would be that Monday of two years ago when the lockdown officially began March 16th. Damn. Yep. That's why I, I remember it like it was yesterday because at my job, I used to work one overnight shift a week because that's what our delivery schedule was on yeah. a Tuesday Tuesday evening. So I'd start at about 10, work until 6.30 a.m. And when I went to work, I still remember Ruby Gobert, an NBA player. Mm-hmm. He had diagnosed the COVID, and he went like touched, touched all, all the, the microphones, microphones around. Thinking it was a joke. Yeah. Dude. And then literally, I, go, I wake up the next day, and it's like, Oh, hey, there might not be hockey tonight. I'm like, oh man, am I gonna miss the Leafs game? Son of a bitch. <laughs> I go to, I go to bed. I go to about 7:30. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna crack a beer, go to bed, wake up in the afternoon. Next thing I know, just the world is topsy turvy. Like I get all I think I had some mixed missed texts from from some of my family. And uh I'm like, go turn on sports center. All sports canceled. <clears throat> all right. So for us, just a I sideburg there myself, uh, there was people that were vilified throughout this entire thing. First off, it was tourists. Us being a tourist beach town, we're like, that person doesn't look like from around here. Should they be here? Should we confront? No, mind your fucking business. Don't. Amen to that. Then it, and then it was, uh, I can't, then it was the people that don't wear masks. Like, if I see someone not wearing a mask, I don't say a damn thing. I mind my business because A, it's not in the job description and B I don't want to get punched in the face. <laughs> and, th- and then they vilified people who didn't do this. I'm like, I have four words that I live by. And I think that anyone could just benefit. And it's just to each their own. Live and let live buddy. I I'm, and, I'm, and- I'm right there with you. I'm right. Th- I'm right yeah. there with you. I mean, when it comes, when it comes to masks, uh, the regular cloth masks, I just said the bandanas don't do anything. Uh, the surgical masks really only protect others if the person themselves have COVID. So, like, if you wear that blue mask, it's not going to prevent anything from getting in to you, but it's going to prevent you from spreading it to others. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, if you're symptomatic or if you if you have it, duh, wear a mask. Then it's the N95s, which actually are very, very effective. But, Fred, did you know this? Like, uh, if you have a beard... Like masks don't do anything because it just goes right under the beard. Huh. Well, I've been growing this this tash since the pan- I, I call it my COVID stash. And then, COVID stash, uh, dude. I I, I had a COVID stash. <laughs> remember my COVID stash? I remember. Yeah, you, we you, did a podcast because Ricky was in the hospital. You, you bastard! You you shared you shared that image of my birthday with me and the mustache. And I was like, this is <laughs> that's such a good rib. <laughs> it's such a good rib. Kingdom Hearts poster in the background. Yeah, too. Dude, awesome, I still by got the way. It. That, 
the uh, the 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 banners in my bedroom. Um, nice. I still got it. I'm keeping that tapestry forever. I love that thing. I mean, I bought Kingdom Hearts on the PC, even though I didn't need to. I played that game thousands of times. I bought it, I bought it one more time, <laughs> the whole set on the PC. But uh, Fretz, I love the mustache, man. Not many people can pull off mustaches. Uh, my dad is one of them. He's been rocking the same stash since the 80s. Uh, nice. There's this actor in Jersey City who I follow and used to work with very briefly who also rocks, rocks a great mustache. And then there's you rocking a great mustache. So, uh, Tell me about your mustache. 